Hey everyone, it's Joe. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Before we get into this very, very epic and long SF Pen Show haul, I am going to need you to grab a beverage because it's a long one and also to sit back and relax while I tell you some exciting news. So I finally, you know, I've been toying around with the idea of doing this, but I finally started my own Patreon page. Yay! There should be like fireworks right here. Like, boop, boop, boop. Uh, but I'm really excited. I've been toying um, with this, you know, idea for a while, but I finally did it. And I am doing this because I want to share a more personal side of, you know, Job's journal and like myself, Job, um, with, you know, longtime viewers and supporters. And I thought that Patreon would be a more safe and like smaller space to do so because, you know, sharing um, vlogs with friends, family, you know, my face in it. I don't really feel comfortable doing that on YouTube on such a big platform, um, but I thought, you know, Patreon sounds like a nice place to do it because I want to share, you know, all these different fun sides of me that I don't get to show. So like vlogs, um, maybe talk about, you know, more personal things like personal diaries and finance tracking and whatnot. So I thought that um, I would do so on Patreon. So um, on Patreon, I have three um, tiers. I'll leave them on the description bar and also on the screen right now um, so you can follow along. But the first tier is the Eggies tier. They're all egg themed, by the way. Um, and Eggies tier is more like a thank you tier. So there's like little um, blog posts, photos, and access to the Discord server. We have the Cracklings tier, which I think is a super cute name, but um, it's just um, the basically the non-physical, oh wait, digital, that's the word, the digital tier. So you get an exclusive video for um, patrons or a podcast episode or both, um, as well as uh, an exclusive uh, printable. So um, this term, oh, wow, this term, I'm already thinking of school, but um, I made like a school back to school theme um, printable. It's um, dated from 1 to 31, so you, you don't have to use it just in September. Um, but yeah, this is like the printable for this month. I have two versions. One is just a regular PDF and one is a silhouette uh, print and cut file because we don't like fussy cut. Well, I'm all right with fussy cutting. It's not my favorite, but this is the original painting right here. And then, yeah, I just scanned it and like formatted it to be a printable uh, for my patrons. And then um, there's also access to the Discord server and, you know, access to polls and whatnot. So I feel like it's like a nice happy medium. And then the last tier is called the sunny side up tier, which is the physical tier. So you get a physical reward on top of all of the same rewards as um, the previous tier. So that's how it works. It kind of builds up on each other. So you still have access to the rewards from the other tier. Um, but this tier, you get a... a not this painting, but you get a postcard of this painting. So I'm doing a postcard for um, each month. So um, it's the postcard tier, and I think it's fun because it this is what this is what's gonna push me to be more creative and to like push my limits in terms of like painting and drawing because I really want to do like a dedicated like art painting piece or doodle each month, and I always put it off. But this is a good push for me to do it. Um, this month's. Theme. Again, it doesn't really make sense. If you actually look closely at all of this, um, all of <laughs> these doodles, these back to school doodles, this is actually like early 2000s, mid 2000s back to school because kids are not using TVs on carts anymore and like these old school projectors, but I want it to be a little bit nostalgic. But as you can see, there's oranges scattered all throughout this um this printable because the the painting that i did was like this lovely still life of like an orange vine blossom in a in a vase vase and yeah I, i'm really proud of this it's like um it's all on gouache i tried not to do any line work and yeah this is gonna be shrunk down to a postcard size um for patrons but yeah that was my not so quick uh shout out about Pat patreon um Obviously, you don't need to support, and I just want to make this clear. I'm not disappearing from YouTube. I'm still going to be posting, you know, once a week. Um, if anything, you'll probably get more content uh, from me because, I don't know, I'm just really happy to share my process and whatnot. So be sure to check me out on Patreon, but I'm also not leaving YouTube. I'm still here, and you'll still see me. You can't get rid of me that easily. Um, but yeah, we'll let past Job actually 
Pastro was ve also very excited because he was hauling all of these SF Pen Show goodies. So we'll let him chatter away. Um, please bear with us because we are both very rambly. Um, but yeah, let's let's see what Pastro has to say about all of his all of his Pen Show purchases. It is my SF Pen Show slash San Francisco in general uh, haul. I bought a lot of things and I also received a lot of gifts from friends. So I thought I would just go straight into this. Uh, the San Francisco videos will be coming very soon. There's going to be a lot of vlogs and a journal with me's. So I guess this is like the start of the series, but I thought I would just do one haul of everything that I bought let's not be judgmental because i bought quite a bit i went a little bit over budget so um if you are planning to go to sf please be wise and you know allocate a lot of funds especially if you're going to your first pen show like i did so um we'll weave through some of the lovely things that i received um from friends and then we'll go on to pen show purchases but i just want to give a big 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 shout out to um a viewer and friend of mine um, that gifted this to me. I am so excited. This is from Just Will on Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube. Um, Will gifted this to me. This is the JLB Creative, so James Luke Burke Creative um, bento box from his virtual voyage um, classes and he offered this as um, something that you can purchase if you join his virtual uh, voyages. Um, I really wanted this. I, I've never been able to attend any of James's um, actual um, classes but I really wanted to buy this to support and also to see the craftsmanship. Look at this. Like I, I think it's just so creative and James is just like senpai to me like I don't know. He's so inspirational. Uh, be sure to check check out um, James Lubrick on YouTube and Instagram and his Collage Club. But this is yeah, this is from Will. Um, oh, I don't. I'll make sure I <laughs> block that out. Wow. Um, thanks, Will. And then doxes him. Just kidding. Um, so I'll be sure to um, to link Will down below. But um, this is the bento box. Oh, there's a mini zine. I won't go into too much detail. I'm sure there are a lot of videos out there um, that cover the bento box. This actually got a little bit destroyed because I had to put some stationery in here. But again, thank you, Will, for this. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm. This is so kind. It's one of the most generous gifts ever. So thank you, Will. And this is just part one of the gifts. So, oh my gosh, I need to. I need to. Need to save this sticker. Um, but there's. Let me just show you a quick rundown of what's in here. Ah, oh, this is what I really wanted to see. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is. Um, I think James made sure to make it really look like a bento, but um, this has been on like a flight and has been opened up a little bit. So I apologize if it doesn't look as um, awesome as it um, was supposed to look upon arrival. But this is James's. Oh, we got. We lost some stamps. These are his um, tiny wooden stamps. I really wanted these because I thought they would look so good with um, a lot of, you know, journal spreads. Um, this is what they look like. Ah, uh, it's so cute. So this is one of them. There's roll stickers. There's a patch that I think I want to put on my traveler's notebook. Um, there's some washi tape, a bunch of vinyl stickers. I love how James took the time to like really pack this like a bento. Like I'm sure this had a really cool um, layout because there's um, some sticky tack on on some of these. Oh, vinyl stickers! And then, oh my gosh, this I really wanted this. Oh my gosh, when James made this, I was like, oh, I need that. This um, like Tokyo mailbox um, charm. Some James washies. Ah, three of them so good um post-it note um clear rubber stamps and then i think these are one of the many sticker sheets in here oh my gosh oh, okay i need to actually i might have to share this with friends because this is too generous thank you so much will for this um such a kind viewer and and now friend oh so cute okay i think that was that's it. I'll go into more detail if you want me to, um, you know, talk about the the bento in more um, detail. Let me know. Um, thank you, Will, for this. 
Oh, I was so excited. Like when he passes, I was like, oh, are you serious? Um, and then, oh my gosh, I am very thankful um, for my friends. They really don't have to get me anything, but they have really spoiled me. Um, let's see. <laughs> this is all just gifts and there's even more. So shout out to all of my lovely friends that I um, got to meet in person on this trip. This is also from Will. This is so generous. This is a Lamy LX. Oh my gosh, in like rose gold. I think this is the limited edition for this year. They always do a metal Lamy. This is my first one. Oh, shout out to Will. This is again, the same Will that gave me the lovely, lovely bento box. This is so, so generous. Um, so kind. Um, I'll be sure to um, ink this up. Um, I don't know in this video because well, this will probably be a really long video because I bought a lot. Also, look at the washi that he used. It's so funny. Um, so, so generous. I also bought this um, tote from, I guess this is part of the haul too, from Dog Ear Books. I told myself I would only buy one tote and I bought this on the last day. And I freaking love this tote because it has two back pockets and it's huge. I actually ended up using this as a kind of mini hand carry um, or carry on on the trip. Um, <laughs> this is not really a gift. This is actually from a D stash table because I went to a stationary, um, meetup with the stationary brew team. So, um, my fellow friends from Twitch, we are part of a brew team called stationary brew. And we had a little D stash table when we hung out. The I think these are from either Kelly love letters, um, Kelly, which I finally got to meet. I love Kelly. And then toasty, toasty treat, AKA Ariel. Um, I'm not sure who these are from, but I know these are. One of these is a limited edition colorway and these are both Lamy LX's. So they're the metal Lamy's just like what Will showed. Um, but I thought, oh my gosh, I, even if these are wonky, it'll be fun, uh, a fun experiment to play around with the feet and whatnot. I'll probably clean this, these out. I think they're already clean, but this one's missing a nib, but holy crap. Um, I'm, I'm a fan. I actually do like Lamy's. Um, and yeah, I am still a basic pen uh person i still you know i'm working my way up to fancier pens but these are so lovely and then shall we go to the real mvp of this trip i think i need to like i don't know i might cry um this is from my good good friend bestie um this is from florence live life and create she actually gave me so much so i just need to double check she also gifted me this clip oh my gosh okay so this is oh uh, like florence gave me so much so um i kind of enabled florence a while back to get um a foil quill from we are memory keepers and she found that there was a fine version so she had to she had to gift this to me i i, I remember her saying that she wanted to give this gift this to me and i was like oh okay um so Thank you, Florence. And then, oh, when she went to, um, I think these are all, I don't, I'm not sure if she bought this from LA, but I, I love this brand, um, Map Tote. Um, when I was traveling back in the past um, in like America, I would always see their totes because they're all made in America, I believe, made in the USA. And this is a nice California to um, like pouch. I'm going to put a lot of, I'm going to use this for my tech devices, I think. And then in the same vein, this is also from um, Map tote or map note for map tote same company this is like oh this is so cute i want to put this up on like um my pegboard this is so cute it's just like a decorated tag so cute and then i'm pretty sure this is from florence i'm not sure i think it is um i had to um disassemble all of the gifts that people sent because i wanted to keep them safe um and pack them efficiently so this is um a stamp set i don't have a sans serif capital um stamp set so this is cute this is by ink by jeng and it says future tracker task notes to do so nice and then oh when um when my uh bestie um florence went to um i think magnolia is in oh the south i'm not quite sure she got me a little um tote from i think this is um one of the restaurant slash bakery cafes that um a lot of people journal at or maybe that's where uh, florence journal that um at magnolia um this is so cool i i love a good tote bag i'm a tote bag user um as much as i love like cool like backpacks and stuff i still like love a good 
you know cream <laughs> tote bag um, it just like works with any outfit um, so this is from the Bessie Florence and then when I was shopping around Kinokuniya um, and Maido I had this um, and I was gonna purchase it but she's like no I'm just gonna buy it for you so so kind of Florence um, moving on um, this is from Teresa of My Documented Life. I love Teresa's Instagram feed and I got to meet her on the last day of the pen show on Sunday. And I, I just made these little like passports for, um, for friends. Let me just show. So this is like my main kind of like giveaway. I designed this like mini zine that's um, like a passport. I had a lot of fun making this um, and there's like stamping zone. So this is what I made for other people. And I, I'm always like, I don't think I've made enough. Like I, I not made enough. I don't think I, I, I wish I was able to give more to people. Um, but it's okay. Next time I'll have to plan more. Maybe I'll make like sticker sheets or whatnot. Um, but this is so generous. Like everyone is so generous. I'm so thankful for these lovely friends. Um, so shout out to um, Teresa of My Documented Life. I'll leave everyone's um, Instagrams and social medias down below. And then guys, I'm literally crying because I got to meet my like my other bestie, my Capricorn bestie. Um, we call each other best because that's like a Filipino like slang term for like I guess bestie. Uh, but I got to meet Abby, Abby C. You'll see it in the vlogs. I I feel like I can't really go into too much detail because videos and photos always you know work better. But I got to meet Abby on um, Sunday and oh she didn't have to be this generous. <laughs> she got me so much stuff. So. Um, I don't know if she knew this, but I've been looking for Alt Gold Grun. Is that how you pronounce it? Alt Gold Grun um, from Roar and Klinger. Um, this is such a nice olive green shade. I'll sh I'll probably swatch this at some point. Um, and she got me this cute stamp. It's so cute. It's so tiny. This is cute for like um, ink swatching on like a Hobonichi Weeks or something smaller. And then I already purchased one of these um, journals that. Um, Abby um, makes this is called the diarist it's an a5 um, dot uh, journal it has like prompts in it it has 100 gsm paper and it's fountain pen friendly and oh my gosh this comes with lovely stickers that i absolutely love and then i'm almost running out of them because i use them quite often and so this diarist comes with this as a set um, and then <laughs> she she gave me even more stickers which is so nice because i love these and then um i haven't really talked about my um next year's setup but i really intend on um using only oh actually i don't want to say that because i might end up buying a hobonichi but i i do want to use my um unfinished notebooks and then this is a gift from abby and um christine of everyday explorers co so the lovely um like uh paper goods and stamp goods brand um run by christine heron i these two are like a powerhouse um uh, in like my uh in my world well in everyone's world too but they are such big inspirations abby and christine they're like the ultimate like um self-made business owners and i love them so much um and ah so they, <laughs> I haven't actually seen what's inside. Um, so they, you know, gifted me this lovely, let's make a mini book set. This is the World Traveler set that Abby um, and Christine collaborated on. So this was a collaboration between Everyday Explorers Co. and Abby C. So it's, it's a full set. So I'll leave the link in the description bar below. But this also comes with like a clear stamp set and all the items you need to make like a mini book, which is really nice because I want to document my travels in San Francisco and this will really come in handy um they also gave me this california sticker sheet which is so cute like it's it's perfect that i went you know san francisco uh, i feel like the bay will always have like a special place in my heart now and then obviously oh stamps that this is like the um kind of journal fountain pen aligned stickers uh not sticker sheet this is um a stamp set and this is the pen and paper set and this is designed by christine heron um who again owns everyday explorers co so good i can't get enough this is so so good i'm oh so generous um and i'm thankful that you know i finally got to meet my 
Capricorn bestie, um, Abby C. I'll le obviously leave her links down below. I think you all know her though, but um, yeah, I'm so happy that we got to hang out um, IRL. And then this is kind of in the same vein. Oh, this is also from Abby. This is um, a Sarah Faber uh, sticker. Love her artwork. Got some pins. This should be in another um, set. Um, this is all of the other gifts and paper goodies that I got from friends. I don't really have um, enough time to go over this, but um, just know that I'm very, very thankful to all the friends that gave me things. This is also how I separated my ephemera um, for each day using uh, glycine bags. Um, but yeah, there's so many good stuff from Steph's paper, Toasty Treat, Alo0822, those are the words, Jazz and Marie plans, Gaiden, oh, the list goes on, like I could actually list everybody, but I'll leave all of the people in the description bar below, um, I just want to show this little cookie uh, <laughs> ruler, I, um, Jasmine of Jazz and Marie plans is kind of like, I don't know, I, I love Jasmine so much, she's like my, my big sister, like, ah, oh, I love her so much. Um, but she got me this cookie, um, this cookie ruler. I love um, BT21, um, and this was like a nice addition. So there's that. I'm gonna put these pins in here too, and then this is from. Oh, I was also staying with um, Paper and Milk Denise. She's oh, I love Paper and Milk. She is one of the kindest soul and she gave me my first simply gilded tape i know these are kind of sought after these were like the tapes um to to hoard and to buy um when um washi tapes were kind of becoming a thing in north america i missed that boom in stationery i was just getting into it in like 2015 and i think that's around the same time this was all happening uh, but i really didn't know much about like american stationery because i was so focused on traveler's company um, but this is my first Simply Gilded tape, and it's a San Francisco tape. Um, and I also got a whole bunch of sticker sheets and stickers from Paper and Milk Denise, and also our lovely friend Connor, um, who goes by Connor underscore Olo on um, Instagram and Twitch. We stayed together, and oh, you'll see all the madness and um, the chaotic energy in the vlogs. Um, I also got some lovely goodies from a D stash. D -stash table that's really hard to say d stash table um and these are my picks these are some midori leaf stickers gotta have these because these are totally my aesthetic they're like watercolory um someone was destashing one of these field notes um like moon notebooks i freaked out i've always wanted something from this collection but i never had a chance to get it um so there's that this is lovely i know it doesn't take fountain pen ink very well that's fine we'll find a purpose for it and then i've never purchased anything from sterling ink but they are releasing a new planner coming up really soon i'm kind of curious to get one and then these are some midori paper clips that i really want to use i think these are from april that she was um giving to everyone and then this isn't part of um the gifts well i guess it is but this is also some really good news so again my friend abby who gave all these lovely gifts over here um was actually um launched her new book it's officially launching this september it's called the art of the travel journal um, and my copy arrived right when i got back from san francisco and guys it's a surprise i don't want to flip through this because you should really purchase it because abby is an icon and she's so talented and she worked so hard on this but I'm a little bit extra biased because not only am I a friend of Abby's, but I also am featured in the book. I can't believe it. My work is in like a physical book. I can't believe it. It even says my name, my Twitch, Instagram, TikTok. I have a website. I don't know. Favorite art supply washing team. I can't get over it. These are two travel journal spreads, one from Ottawa and one from Paris. And I can't believe that's there. Like that's... I own this. <laughs> it doesn't make sense in my mind, but uh, all of our other friends here here too, Christine, Heron, and also Chelsea, uh, my variant, my lovely friend Chelsea, uh, of those with the words. I can't get enough of this. Be sure to check this out. Abby worked so hard. I'll leave the pre-order links and hopefully 
um, you can support Abby because she works so hard in this and there are so many lovely tips on travel journaling here. I'm going to definitely sift through this and read this while I create my travel journal for San Francisco because I always want to be inspired by my friends and fellow creators. So those are just gifts. Let's get on to purchases. Okay, we are at part two. These are actual purchases that I made with my own money. Uh, it's gonna get a little bit, it's gonna get a little bit scary. <laughs> Uh, so it's not scary in like jump scares, but like the scary amount of money I've spent on this trip um, I did budget for it. So I felt okay, but you know, I definitely went over budget and that's Something to be you know, it's a good discussion point because you can easily get sucked into this and I think my suggestion is that you really do budget more than you really need to because you're gonna end up with a lot more um because i don't know i i've never been to a pen show but apparently you i think live enabling is a real thing so we'll just get started we will start with one of the more i guess purchases that i really wasn't expecting to buy um because this is so lovely um and i actually was enabled by um, Amy Life of Lily Koi because I was shopping with them on Friday on the first day of the pen show and I was blown away so this um, I don't have its original box anymore because it was too bulky but this is very luxurious this is tada the plotter brand um, leather pen case it is so lovely I I've seen other people use this um one of my friends, uh, My Life Mitz on YouTube. You've probably seen her showcasing this. She has one. Oh, like in person, the leather is so soft. It's so soft. Softer than my Traveler's, no, my The Superior Labor um, pen pouch. Not pen pouch. I think it's, um, it's a pen roll similar to this. This is actually really nice because it is magnetic it has a nice magnetic closure you get four pens here this is a little bit of some i wouldn't say wasted space I, it's here to conceal the magnet here but i guess you could put something in here if you really wanted to but it's really just four pens and then some other goodies so i would say pencil if you really wanted to a tape runner i'd try to find a tape runner that works in here because i like to always have a tape runner because you know when you're journaling on the go but this is nice you can put an eraser i've always thought that pen rolls were nice but not that practical because there was no place to put an eraser or you know smaller things like i've always had you know clips or other things that i need to bring with me and my pen roll was never the pen case for that but this kind of solves that it's very you know small and sleek so if you really want to pare it down this is nice that'll this will set you back a pretty penny i'll try to include the prices and like just say the prices i think this was like 80 usd so it's you know pricey uh, actually no i think it no yeah it was 80 usd I, um so it is pricey but honestly the leather is fantastic um and i can't wait to see this age and you can bring four pens and the nice thing about these is that they're all separated they have a little uh stitch here so they aren't gonna touch which is nice if you're not a fan of pens touching <laughs> um and then we will go to actually i should probably show these purchases first because I made this purchase a year ago. This wasn't even at the pen show, but it, it's part of, I guess, my SF purchases because I've only received them now. Ta-da! This is the fifth anniversary Traveler's Notebook Taiwan Beer Edition. Um, I purchased this from our lovely friend, Sincerely Mori. She kind of um, was like a person, not a personal buyer, I guess in, in some ways, yes. Um, but I, I got this from... Uh, Japan and this was actually um, I shared shipping with Florence for this so I bought a few things I bought um, this leather coin case because I lost that when I was um, traveling I bought one from Traveler's Company like in 2017 and I was devastated ever since it was lost 
um, I bought this limited edition um, 10 notebooks, 10 colors notebook. I'll flip through, through that because it's actually really interesting. And then obviously I had to get the, oh no, that's the, that's a lie. That's a different thing. <laughs> I had to get this. This is the charm set for the Taiwan beer. So it comes with um, a little beer charm and a beer can op not can opener, beer opener. Wow, I can't, I can't verbalize everything right now. But I'll show this first. I I think you've seen this in the past. If you've been a long time viewer, you know this was like my ride or die coin case. It doesn't fit that much. It's kind of tiny, but oh. I've always loved it, and I'm so sad that I, you know, oh, I already put money in here. <laughs> um, I was so sad that I lost it um, in my travels. Um, this is nice. It's made out of the same black um, leather from Traveler's Company, um, and it is fantastic. I can't believe I have it again. Um, so this is very, very good. I'm very happy that I own it. Um, Price on this, I don't know. I think this might have been around 30 bucks, maybe less. Uh, let's see. No price. It was free. Pretty sure it was either. I think with conversion, it was like 30 Canadian dollars. Um, or maybe, yeah, it was a little bit pricier. Um, and then this is, again, from the 10th anniversary um, of the Traveler's Factory. So the actual Traveler's Factory store not Traveler's Company, and they released 10 notebooks with 10 different colors, and they have different paper stocks. This one, the green one, is multicolor, so all the paper is different, and I love this. I can't wait to use it. I don't think it has the same amount of pages because it seems like there's less, but super cool, super fun. Um, I can't wait to use this, and I'm a sucker for using Traveler's Company inserts that are limited edition. <laughs> uh, it just has more... I don't know appeal and then this is something that i've been wanting um for the longest time i i know this is a little bit um not played out but i know a lot of people have already seen this but this is the 15th anniversary of traveler's notebook and they decided to collaborate with taiwan beer and s Lite or s light um i can't believe it's been 15 years already um so this is in a camel colorway Oh, so pretty. Sorry, I haven't even fully seen it. It's so nice. It's very suede. And it has some gold foiling. Has a green elastic. Matches the Taiwan beer aesthetic. And I feel like the camel and green is just a colorway that, you know, has gone... Um, what is it called? It's just like uh, a classic within Traveler's Company at this point. Um, and then the, oh, this this insert is so nice. I like how they have a paper sheet here to protect it from the leather. Ooh, my leather has some little, um, uh, not imperfections, like characteristics, which I like. It has some veining, which I like to see. Um, and then, wow, the first end page uh, or cover page is different. It still has the traditional square there or rectangle, but it has all these like beer uh, beer labels so cool and it says cheers at the back oh i love it so much yay i'm gonna put it back in <laughs> i like how i'm like i love it but i have to protect it again my traveler's notebook count has gone up a lot in the past few years especially with all the limited editions coming out um, but it's a reminder that you know you don't really need all of these um but if you want it go get it <laughs> Uh, this is lovely. I'm gonna. I'm a sucker for keeping the original packaging, so I'm always a little bit distraught when I open one because I'm like, oh, I've ruined it. I've opened it up, but it doesn't matter. Um, I wonder how this one will age. I think I have the most Camel Travelers notebooks out of all the colorways, just because. Um, all of their collab, a lot of the collaborative notebooks um, that Traveler's Company has been doing has been with like camel colorways. Like you've seen um, the Ace Hotels one that I have. The Moomin one is also in camel. Um, so it's, I feel like it's um, a common color that they use. And so I have 
um, I guess not by necessity, but because of the, f the function of that, I have a lot more Camel Traveler's Notebooks. Okay, so this is like an unofficial pen show purchase, but we'll keep moving on. Um, we've already seen this lovely bad boy. Shall we go into some pens? So the first pen that I actually bought in the pen show was this bad boy and then this bad boy then this one and then i was really mischievous and i got another um last last two pens that were really not something that i was gonna purchase but at this moment i can't seem to find them i don't know where they went okay we'll go with the first one so i bought this pen i actually this was a pre-planned purchase i knew i was gonna get this one for sure this is the twisby eco in the drum roll uh, the glow in the dark one so before the pen show i um was talking with joy oh hi joy we all know and love joy um and we both kind of were like we will get this pen and we're gonna get it um, with a special grind or get it ground down um, by CY of Tokyo Station Pens, who was going to be at the pen show as well. Um, and so we both bought it. Um, I bought it on the first day. Um, unfortunately, I didn't plan properly and I didn't sign up um, with uh, CY um, to get um, like a time slot. So I unfortunately didn't get a chance to, to do that, but I did get it ground down by... Let me just grab my scrap notebook by Pen Realm, um, Kirk of Pen Realm, who usually works at Drom Goals. And I got my first custom grind. I got a um, architect grind on my broad, and he actually took into account my higher writing angle. I write at a pretty high angle. Uh oh, this actually has no ink in it. This is just, it was just a dip test. I lied. Never mind. This is what it looks like though with the architect. <laughs> it writes like this. So I was just I was watching a TV show and I was just writing down what people were saying. Um but you can see I can write with a thicker angle um if I write on an on a steep not uh, not a steeper angle. But basically an architect grind is um really fun because when you write with it um when you do a vertical stroke like this It'll be nice and thin, but if you do a horizontal stroke, you'll get a thick line. So this, I'm just showing you what it would look like. So if I went down like this, it would be nice and thin. And then if I went horizontally, it would be a thicker line. Um, but depending on how you write, you can also kind of get the thicker line all the time. If you just write, turn your pen a little bit. I don't think that's how people you know, use that. And I don't think that's advertised very well, not ad advertised very well. I don't think that's just like recommended, um, but you can do it and you can, I can get pretty like thin lines using um, just the vertical um, way of writing. I do have a um, like higher writing angle so I can get, you know, I think that's how Kirk made it. So I can still write, um, normally without like a super broad tip um with my vertical lines but then when i do like horizontal lines they're definitely thicker which is really fun um i wish i could demonstrate this but yeah this is a glow in the dark twisby you can charge it with like daylight or uv light and then when you're done um charging it in the sun um at night this will glow in the dark and this is kind of like um a pen show twinning pen because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not just me and joy a lot of other people got um glow in the dark twisby ecos so it's kind of like a little pen show like twinning pen but i like to think that joy and i coined it um and we were the ones that uh started the trend i'm pretty sure everyone wanted this because it was released around the same time but um, in my head we were the ones that started it <laughs> Um, and then, oh my gosh, uh, this was one pen. I knew I wanted this one and I was torn between getting this pen from this brand or another uh, pen from um, 
Schoen Design, S-C-H-O-N Design. Uh, they make hand-turned metal pens. I think not just, they make a lot of pocket pens, but this is from Franklin Christoph. Uh, these pens are a mainstay in pen shows because of the lovely customization you can do when you purchase these pens. They have these pens with all these different nib grinds. So from like um, extra fine, actually from needlepoint to like double broad, they have music, they have italic, they have like all of these other ones. I think they have, I'm not sure if they have a reverse architect, but they have all these lovely nib grinds that you choose and you choose a body there and basically they bring a whole bunch of pen bodies and you decide which one you like and some of them are you know smaller pocketable pens some of them are larger pens they all vary in price um and it's nice it's like a pen buffet if you want to call it that um and people usually run to this table because it's kind of a first come first serve because franklin christoph just brings a whole bunch of bodies and you decide what you want um, so, and there's usually just one of each body and they have a lot of prototype pens. So like bodies that they normally don't sell on their website. So I kind of did some planning. Um, I knew I wanted one of these, um, especially the way people talk about it in, um, past pen show videos and just from researching, but oh my gosh, guys, this is so pretty. I love this so much. I was looking at the Franklin Kristoff, um, website and i've been really intrigued by this like their de demonstrator pens so the pens where you can see the inside that have a bluish greenish tint to it because it has i i'm not sure if they officially call it the sea glass pen but i've been calling it the sea glass pen because it looks like polished sea glass like if you've seen sea glass it's usually kind of a matte finish but sometimes um there are you know places that polish sea glass Clash sea glass into like this lovely kind of translucent clear um shade and not shade this transparent finish um and it's so lovely you can see that the inside of the barrel is textured so it even looks like glass like it just to me this looks like a vintage glass bottle turned into a pen and this has a number six nib so they have a larger nib on here and this is really nice i don't have this inked you can also um post this actually you don't have to because it's incredibly weighted um this is actually the model 66 it's more of a cigar shape i was so torn between two pens i'll leave it on the screen right now um but there were two pens in this kind of similar finish um and it's so beautiful again my my friend oh hi joy got a similar pen so we're kind of almost twinning um but this has an extra fine nib flex it's my first flex nib pen so a flex nib is kind of similar to a calligraphy nib so if you press down um you get line variation so you get thin lines and thick lines if you depending on pressure so you can kind of see um right here if i press down the tines open up which let um more ink in and this is split all the way down the middle so you i'm scared to put too much pressure on it just because this is still a steel nib it's not a glass not a glass nib, a like 14k nib gold nibs are you know slightly more flexible and i just don't i'm scared to press too hard but it it is made for this and it, it has this slit all the way down the middle um to accommodate that but it's so pretty it comes with a converter um I was going to get, you know, another, I was planning to get a, a music nib or an, an italic nib, but I thought, oh man, I, I love calligraphy and like brush lettering and calligraphy is actually how I started in like the fountain pen world because, um, I wanted to learn calligraphy, but then I was like, oh wait, I like fountain pens too. But I obviously realized that not all fountain pens can be flexed. That's how you would break a fountain pen. <laughs> um but i don't know this is just a nod to like the beginning of my like stationary hobby and i am still not over it i got a little denim pouch it, it, i was kind of bummed because they were out of the leather ones but that's so nice i i mean that's all right because i can put it in this one let's just see how it looks actually it's oh so pretty Ooh, it's a bit snug but it fits so pretty okay i need to stop stop fanboying over this pen 
Um, and then let's look at one of the last pens um, before I go on a little break. For you, this will be the same video, but I need to get some water. But this is oh, my first Narwhal pen. It's so funny. The story behind this is actually really funny. I'm surprised there's no scratches. But on Saturday, um, which is the second day of the pen show, I really wasn't there. I only was um, there for like the last 10 minutes of the pen show. So I bought a ticket. The lovely person at the counter let me buy a two day ticket for the price of one day because I was only going in for like 10 minutes. And I literally ran <laughs> inside um, to get one purchase and then i ran to the narwhal table table <laughs> narwhal table uh to get a narwhal pen because i've never tried them i know they have them here locally but i just wanted to get one and this is a piston fill just like a twisby so you twist it brings up ink and i really like this because when i saw it i'm actually kind of bummed that there's less green than i thought in my head i was like wow it's a green and orange pen my two favorite colors but this has some blue in it but it's still so beautiful it's green white orange and blue and i think it's a lovely colorway this is so unlike my other pens because i usually have like very tamed and solid pens i love bright color pens um and I love, you know, unique pens that are colorful. I feel like I'm just repeating myself, but like I'm just grabbing my pens right now. Like, you know, I love a good colorful moment like this. So I'm not afraid of color, but I don't have anything in this finish. And um, I was also eyeing or wanting to buy a Binu pen because they're very unique. Oh my gosh, why did I just try to flex that? Oops, this is not a flex nib pen. Um, but you can see there's a little ink window and I can't wait to ink this with like one of the th three colors here we can go with green orange or blue which is really fun i love matching the the ink colors um and yeah the funny story about this is that yeah i bought it within like 10 minutes and i also left the pen show and i realized like where the heck is my pen because i looked in my box and there was nothing there and while i was running this was on the floor and a lady was like oh you dropped something and i was like oh cool um so then i was like oh that's weird like where can the pen b and this was just on the floor <laughs> so the lovely folks at mido actually helped me out because um they saw it on the floor and they're like i think that's your pen uh so so yeah that was um my like 10 minute shopping spree when i bought this i might have not been in the right state of mind because i was like i just want to shop for like 10 minutes and i just bought this but i'm happy that i did and it is a lovely collection to like my piston filling pens okay so we have a few more things actually i'll just like move it into the center frame actually i i say a few but <laughs> there's still so much i really bought so much okay so we'll go with the last few pens so this was day three last day sunday and this is one of the makers that i really want to purchase from this is from i mentioned it earlier but is it shown design um s-c-h-o-n design made in philadelphia i wanted to support this because a lot of friends have you know raved about their pens and i really wanted to try one they're known for their pocket pens they're all like metal hand turned or at least i think i think they're hand turned i'm pretty sure but these are so cool this is a metal pen um i think it's a brass or stainless steel body and i bought something that's a little bit unlike my usual aesthetic um there was a green one there was an orange one there was a lovely brass one i was so close to getting a brass one but i thought i have a whole bunch of brass pens already from traveler's company um so i thought i would change it up and this is so lovely it's so tiny and it's so engineered so well like this this closure is the smoothest like metal um screw cap closure i've ever felt like it doesn't feel like like there's any resistance but it also feels secure there's also threading here so you can make it a full-on it's just a nice pocket pen right um this only takes converters but it also has a yovo number no. six nib so it has a pretty long like a bigger nib for the type of pen that it is, which I think is super cool because all of my pocket pens have smaller nibs on it. And this is you know, a chonky guy. 
Um, and then, yeah, this is lovely. It's different. Um, I also got some empty cartridges from um, Shown Design. Honestly, they are so kind. Like, I was talking with them for a, a pretty long time. And I think, honestly, they were just so charming. I was like, I just should buy something from them. Because I was kind of over my budget already. So this pushed me well into the over budget range. This was around 160 So it's pricey. It's not... It's not the cheapest pen out there, um, but I wanted to support this maker and, you know, they just do great stuff. So if you're looking for like a different type of pocket pen that's not just, you know, your standard Kawakos or I don't know. Kawakos are pretty good with like pocket pens, but if you want to support a small, smaller maker, check them out. And then, oh man, this is my, I thought my Franklin Kristoff was my favorite pen purchase, but this one is my favorite pen purchase of them all and it's really shocking because i bought a vintage pen this is a vintage waterman pen this is made in the usa with a gold 14k gold nib it is a smaller pocket pen almost the size of a um a prera a pilot prera let me just grab it so you can we can compare it is fantastic. It has this lovely amber um, color. I believe this is called the Copper Pearl finish from Waterman. I was doing some research after, and this actually is a, um, I think it's like from their 511C series. I'm not quite sure. That's the closest thing I could find. But the biggest plot twist is that it is a flex nib. Oh my God. This is so luxurious and bouncy and I really don't feel afraid to to like flex it. I love it so much. It's so nice and bouncy and even for regular writing like it feels nice and smooth. It's so glassy like oh and I can just like add fun flourishes i can i can write my name all fancy if i wanted to i do have a different style of or way of holding my pen when i'm writing with a calligraphy pen just because it's harder to you know you need to get like a nice angle so i end up writing a little bit more different or holding my pen different but it's easy to like move um back and forth um, with my regular pen grip and like the flex grip wow I, I love this so much it's so nice you can tell how much I love it because my ink kind of like notebook oh my gosh how many pages one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten pages of just like playing around with this nib and the lovely uh person named mike sold this to me he sells vintage um vintage flex nibs a lot of people were coming to him to get his uh their uh pens from from him and i was actually inspired by loves hattori on twitch um because she let me try um their uh their flex nib that they bought i don't know if they bought it from mike um but yeah it's so fun i, I like i'm right now i'm just playing with it um, it is fantastic. I love it so much. It is such a unique pen and it actually has a unique filling system where you pull up this lever and it sucks ink in and it just has a bigger bladder in here. So I'm scared to put like, you know, staining inks in here, but I just asked Mike to fill it with whatever ink he had, which he was happy to do so. Um, and yeah, this is like my substitute to not getting the um pilot custom 823 in amber that's one of my grail pens one of my unicorn pens that i want to own someday um but until then i will cherish this vintage waterman from the 40s forever because oh my gosh this is like almost 80 years old and it's writing so nicely this is uh, a celluloid finish um and there's just like gold um hardware you can see that the hardware is kind of it still looks gold. It has some discoloration, but for an 80-year-old pen, 
This is fantastic. I can't get enough of it. I think this is my favorite pen purchase. Um, but it's also tied with all of my other pen purchases because they all hold a very like sentimental feeling in me. But this is just like a cool different pen that I wasn't gonna, uh, I wasn't expecting. I was gonna purchase, and it's my first vintage pen. So yeah, baby's first vintage pen. Um, I'm gonna take a little break again. But for you, it'll be like one second. <laughs> The final stretch i'm not gonna go into too much detail because i will be here for ages talking but let's talk about travelers company so um i actually bought two leather coasters one i gifted to my uh bestie florence live life and create i got her the brown one there was the one last one actually so i wanted to buy one more brown one but there was no more so i just got a black one for myself i lost my camel one i think i accidentally threw it away once when i spilled um like ink all over myself not ink um like juice on my table um, by accident so that's a shame i bought a patch for my um one of my good friends here in vancouver i try to um, get her a little something because i don't know she's always so generous and she's always so thoughtful and i am really bad with gifts it's not really my love language like i love receiving gifts but i'm bad at giving gifts um so yeah this I, this one i tried to remember to do that um and then oh man okay i bl i blanked out at plotter because i really wanted to buy more things but i did not have a chance to do so um I, I i wanted to buy more inserts because i use a plotter narrow and i use a plotter mini um and i didn't buy anything i don't know why i was i was still missing a few things but luckily on friday um i walked into a uh, plotter and literally um penguins creative who works for design phil and was working at our um the booths um with plotter and travelers company was like job you need to get these because they're gonna um, sell out soon so she helped me get the bandwidth lifter ruler pad and the leather uh, card case which i'm so glad and oh uh, for uh penguins creative april is the best she's so awesome and she worked so hard on the during the pen show i'm i feel like not sorry but i feel so thankful for her uh, for working so hard it must be so much work so thank you thank you friend and then i bought two it's not here it'll arrive in november but i ordered two um customized brass pens from travelers company um i bought the green one and the pink one so there's two colorways and i bought both basically april was like i was gonna just buy the green one um i was checking out with um her co-worker ethan um with my purchase and it's like i'll just i'll get one and then april was like no get both so i was like i'll get both <laughs> <laughs> so i have both now they'll come in november i'll show you the customiz customizations that i got when it arrives i also bought the um one more passport um insert the california insert the let's go on a road trip i'm glad i got this i want to hoard and i can finally use my other one i bought a craft refill this is the yellow craft paper i've never used it before i've used their black craft paper but this is the yellow one which i thought would be nice and then i bought the nigel Kborn um limited edition insert because um they have a collab but i really wanted to um get something from it but i didn't want to buy a whole new traveler's notebook or um uh yeah um or the brass pen so i got this because i already already got a brass pen and the fun thing about this is that it's actually craft paper um, but yeah, um, Traveler's Company and Plotter were so busy and they were really selling out. So I really didn't get to do much shopping with them um, as much as I would have liked. So that's one of my regrets. I only bought one ink. Um, I bought Chesapeake Bay from uh, Colorverse. It's a super, super, super light beige. I'm not going to swatch it right now because of, of time uh, constraints. But it's by Colorverse. It's from their America's, America series, I believe. And it's such a tiny bottle but i really really wanted this i've been looking for it so long and i think um this is the reason why i've been into really light brown inks because i've i've been trying to find dupes for this but i'm glad that i finally have it um it is basically this brown but even lighter um which is nice i love like a good like milk tea looking ink um and then i had my dough i bought these two stamps i was on instagram trying to decide which one to get and then i was like no i'm just gonna buy both and i thought this would be nice to stamp with like a versafine black ink like a very budge proof um ink and then just um doing my ink swatches on this because i think i thought it would be another layer of cute um in my like in ink swatching repertoire and then i bought some postcards these are from um 
rare devices slash you know random booths i bought this car that just says love 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 i just love the aesthetic it's definitely like my style um and then i had to get you know the quintessential san francisco postcard like you've seen these around they're like the awesome tourist postcards um had to get one and then when i was there it was always so foggy i never got to see um the golden gate bridge when it was clear so i had to get one that um depicted the fog and then i got these two sticker sheets from mido um we don't have sticky club here at, or it's not sold irl like in person so i bought these lovely um uh, uh stamp like stickers they're from two different artists but they look very similar this one's by noel illustration and this one is suki's sketchbook so nice so mystical and also so cozy like i love not a big fan of purples and like teals and blues but when it's done in like that cozy galaxy way i love it and then this one's like same thing like night sky but green i always see a lot of like navy blue like midnight type um colors for that aesthetic but this one's in green which i really really love um i would have bought two of these i already used one while on the trip actually and then i bought more postcards this is um one of the paid san francisco international pen show um um postcards they were they had some promotional ones which i wish i bought um that had like stuff here so i can use for ephemera but this one i want to send and then this one's just a lovely like um of lovely postcard that has like the the houses um or the different types of houses that they have on in sf because while i was there i was awestruck with the um the architecture the whole time and then lastly uh, well all, on the last leg i bought this crab pen holder um i forget who it's by but it was so cute oh it's by anitol a-h-n-i-t-o-l um, or sculptor78 on hotmail at hotmail.com and it just holds you know a crab any not holds a crab it's just a crab that holds your fountain pen and i thought it would be so cute just like this it would look like this if you could see it but it's so cute and then when i was at rare devices a stationary store slash trinket store um uh, I was shopping with Abby and I was like, oh, I, let's just get twinning um, like decks from uh, this like Live Your Values deck by Lisa Congdon, which is one of our favorite artists. Like we both follow them on Instagram, Abby and I. So we thought we would get this. And this is actually in collaboration with Andrea um, Niculescu. Hope I got the pronunciation right. And it just has like um, different prompts that you can use for journaling, but you can also like use it with your like, I guess tarot if you really wanted to um but i thought i would use this as journaling prompts and then uh, the last thing i won't go into too much detail because i will probably use this in my 2022 or oh, sorry 2023 setup but i signed up for a plotter customization uh, on saturday and i missed it but on the last 10 minutes uh, of the day um, I went to the plotter booth. I went with April and um, I got to meet um, Takoyuki-san, who is the creative director of plotter. And he they allowed me to purchase this um, without, you know, sign, um, like signing up for my slot. Like I had one in the um, early morning, which I missed because I was in San Francisco. Um, but yeah, they were so kind and let me purchase this. I think this is one of the last ones, actually. And I got to see them create it right in front of my eyes because this is, you know, those custom made ones um, where you can choose your own leather. You can even use the choose your uh, stamp, um, your sorry, your um, um, leather style and also your spine style. So I got the oh, the shrink leather. So it's the pebbled leather in the yellow. Oh, it's so beautiful. And then I got the gold spine and then I customized it with silver. So I went with like two metal colors. Um, and yeah, I thought this would be nice. I thought I was going to go with gold to keep it all matchy. But when can you change things up? Like this is the only time you can do a customized plotter. So I had to jump on it and I love it so so much i don't have any yellow leather i know this will probably age to a nice like beige but right now it's butter yellow and i'm hoping that it ages to a mustard um even though i know it'll probably look a little bit more like brown tan but that's okay i really wanted the um brown pueblo or beige pueblo leather um but 
yeah, well, this is what I got. I'm so excited. Okay, I think that concludes my SF Pen Show haul. Please let me know which one was your favorite stationary item that I purchased or received as a gift. I would love to know in the comments down below. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions about any of these certain items. I know this is a very long video, but I hope you got to catch a glimpse of my excitement uh, during the pen show. And yeah, be sure to comment down below um, what's one of your favorite things that I showcase. Oh yeah, one last thing. I won this as a little um, like entry giveaway. It's a rickshaw sleeve. And I also bought this rickshaw sleeve. I forgot. It's the Van Gogh one. And I also bought one for Abby so we could twin. Um, and these are really fantastic uh, pen pouches because they have plush um, materials inside to keep your pen extremely safe. And there's separations that go for the length of the whole case to keep your pen super safe. I really recommend this if you have expensive pens because this will protect it more than your leather cases because they are plushy and soft um, and also protect the the pen all the way through so if you're looking for you know a nice pen case this is it oh my gosh i can't end this video i think that's it folks i will see you in the next one i love you so much please take care Bye bye